I want to introduce a really powerful gentleman now. He is a profound coach. He's a platform speaker, so he knows how to deliver wisdom to large groups, and he knows how to deliver wisdom one-on-one. -on -one. And what the reason I brought him here today is because I want him to be able to deliver wisdom to you, not from the stage, but one-on-one. -on -one. He's actually going to meet with you either one-on-one -on -one or in small group settings and do a blueprint analysis for you. I brought him here at my expense. It wasn't offered in the advertising. It's an unadvertised bonus. And he is going to make sure that you know actually where you are as opposed to where you think you are. He's going to make sure that you have a, a vision of where you want to go to. And he's going to make sure that you know how to get there and he knows how to do that. He knows how to make sure you know where you are, how to make sure you know where you want to get to, and he's going to make sure you know how to get there. Put up your hand if that's exciting. Would you like to meet this gentleman? Yes. Damien Elston. Yes. <laughs> he's a very senior colleague of mine. I have traveled around the world with him. We were recently in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand together. I've spent more time with him than my wife, unfortunately, recently, but in a nice way. And I just am dazzled by his wisdom. Many times I'll say to him, how would you help this gentleman? And, he, and I go for his advice, and I, it, it's just laser. It just, he just has such clarity and such ease and such speed of figuring things out. And so I want you to truly meet Damien Alston, a terrific, terrific gentleman. Thank, Thank you, you for helping my Thank clients. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Great. You know, the funny thing is, is Raymond left out the fact that I'm a professional speaker myself for the last seven and a half years, and I pride myself on talking wrong. Oh, yeah, you'll hear it. Did you saw that? And I didn't mean did you saw it. I meant did you see it. English, I don't get it. I mess it up all the time. How are you? How is everyone? Mess it up all the time. What makes you good when you mess up? Not how you recover. If you mess up occasionally, meaning you're not perfect all the time, what will others see? If you can do it, then I can do it. But if they think that you're too perfect, what may happen? Well, they could screw up, or they might not think that they can do it because they're not as good as, as you seem to be. Seven and a half years as a professional speaker uh, across the world, I'm also a speaker's coach. Now, as a speaker's coach, what I'm very good at doing is watching people and seeing what your flaws are, what your strengths are, things that you do not see on your own, things that other speakers do not see on their own. But I'm also very good at judging personality traits, who you are, how you think. And this is without even talking to you, without talking I can figure out individuals very good. It's something I've always been good at. Now, is that a good trait if you are in the position to try to help people figure out how to be better at what they want to be? And, and not everybody can do that. The, the main thing that is most important is that you cannot do that for yourself. I cannot do it for myself. It takes somebody on the outside looking in to figure out what is the problem, what needs to be fixed, what are, again, the good traits, what are the bad traits, et cetera. With me, I knew that uh, my English is bad. It's always been bad. That's what the teachers always made fun of me about. Uh, your English is horrible, and you know, where'd you come from? So I figured, run with it. In business, most of the people I'm dealing with are people just like me. So I can be the speaker that is just like me, just like you, or I can stand up here for two days, and if you do what I tell you to do from A to C, what usually happens when that person's speaking to you? You start falling asleep, right? Guys, I, I'm not going to tell you who it is. I was watching a speech one time that was so boring that not only did you fall asleep, he fell off the stage. He fell asleep as he was talking about his speech. Be you. Be real. That's one of the most important things that I can tell you guys about business because people can see. 
And, you know, somebody, and, and I had walked out of the room so I didn't hear the whole thing, but somebody said, you know, you can really tell when somebody really cares. And then the response back was, but some people can put on a good show. It's not always true. If somebody truly cares, you can see through that on a one-on-one -on -one meeting versus if it is simply just a show. Have any of you ever shaken somebody's hand and literally within just the first 10 to 15 seconds of meeting them, you realize there was something that you did not like about that? Yeah. Has that happened to any of you? That's a very good gut feeling. And with me, that gut feeling tells me, ooh, I probably don't want to do business with them. Don't know why, but I probably don't want to. Uh, what about this? You're going into a business meeting, whether it's for real estate or for whatever your business is, and you ask somebody, what do you really want to do? What is your main objective? And instead of them saying, helping people, I want to get rich. And I want to make as much money as I possibly can. What does that tell you? They're caring about themselves, may not care about you. If you want to make more money, you should care about others. People buy from you because they want. They believe in you, they care, they like you, they trust you. His bottom line is, I don't care how good your product is. If people don't like you, trust you, believe in you, they're not going to buy from you. So be you, be real. The last thing that you ever want to do is be fake. Most importantly, though, you must choose your words very carefully. Raymond is so right when he says how you need to talk to you versus how is everyone. My words, though, are a little bit more in terms of the words that you use against yourself. Think for a moment, when you do a business deal, let's say that you know you're going to make $80,000 on the deal, but going into it, there's an upfront what? Notice, what did most of you just say? You said cost. You didn't say investment. You said an upfront cost. People might say, how much is it going to cost me this time? What do I have to spend now? But yet I told you we were going to make how much money? $80,000. And you may make that $80,000 in just four to six months. Now my question to each and every one of you is if you made $80,000 in the next four to six months, would that be a good deal for you? Show of hands if that's a good deal. If your hand is not up right now, you've got a serious issue because that's a good deal for me, that's a good deal for Raymond. Now for the rest of the week, if you are ever asked by show of hand, if that answer is you, put your hand up. The only person that is excused is the person that's going in for rotator cuff surgery on Monday morning. Fair enough? Guys, I want you to have fun this week. I've been sitting in the back of the room for the last hour and a half going, ah, because I'm watching everybody and, and we're like this. You got to have fun. You have to wake up. Now, why? The more fun you have, will you learn more this week? Yes. Some of you are saying, well, this week, is it seven days? This weekend. You know what I mean, yes? So if I said, did you saw that? You know what I meant, right? Yes? yes. Have fun, guys. The more fun you have, the more you learn. The more fun you have, the more you retain. Now what I know is the more you learn and the more you retain this weekend, the faster you all start making what? Money. money. Is it fun to make money? Yes. Is it more fun to make money for yourself or for your employer? Do you notice how the, the volume went down on that? That tells me half of you are thinking about it. Is it more fun for me to make money for me or for my employer? Hmm, I don't know. I've been brainwashed for 30, 40, 65 years of my life to tell me that it's more fun if I make the money for somebody else. I can't make the money for me. That would be wrong. Yes? See, it may sound silly to some of you, but the bottom line is you have been brainwashed. Each and every one of you have been brainwashed based on what you say, how you think. And unfortunately, many people don't realize that. If in everyday business, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is how much is that going to cost me or what do I have to spend, all you're doing is thinking negative thoughts about money all day. And if you're thinking negative thoughts about money all day, guess what you're not going to make? Money. It just doesn't happen. It's the laws of attraction. If you want to make more money, you have to what? You have to think that you're going to be making more money. See, understand that in your mindset, if you ever say, what does that cost me? Or what do I have to spend? 
those statements actually mean to lose money. So you're going into the deal saying, hey, I'm going to make $80,000 when I do the deal, but it's going to cost me $30,000 up 